Hey gang, fate has deemed it necessary for another Robbie Rance this week, and today we'll be talking about why Deadpool is not the world's greatest comic magazine. In fact, that title can only belong to one comic book, The Fantastic Four. Marvel comics are coming out. A lot of them have been, have been pretty good. Some of them have been okay. Some of them have been flat out awful. However, Deadpool debuted this week, Deadpool number one. And everybody knows I'm not a big Deadpool fan, but this is not a Robbie ranting about Deadpool. This is about Marvel comics. Across the top of Deadpool number one, it now says, the world's greatest comic magazine. Anybody in the know knows that that is a title that was earned and branded on the Fantastic Four title in the 1960s and continued on that title solely for pretty much almost every single issue of that title. All right, so there is no Fantastic Four book because of Fox Studios, right? They are neglecting the X-Men a little bit because of Fox Studios. Deadpool is owned by Fox Studios, yet Deadpool is still everywhere. Deadpool here, Deadpool there. Deadpool coming out of your ass, like seriously, okay? And that's okay. I'm excited to see people excited about the medium, right? Comic books and superheroes. That's totally cool with me. Like I said, this is not a rant about Deadpool, but a rant against Marvel. Okay, why is it so important to me? Oh, it's because, Rob, you're a big Fantastic Four guy, so it's your favorite comic book, so of course you're upset, right? Yeah, if it was on the other book... I probably would still be upset, but Deadpool's just, because of the double standard about Fox Studios, right? Okay. Now, granted, I will be the first to admit that the Fantastic Four has never, has not always been the most popular or the best-selling comic. And there are a lot of runs of Fantastic Four that are just absolutely terrible. The same is true with Spider-Man, Deadpool, X-Men, Avengers, but whatever. We do have... Some Mark Wade stuff, the John Byrne stuff, the recent Jonathan Hickman stuff, and of course, Stanley Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby and Stanley created the Fantastic Four, and it revolutionized the industry. And that is why this is insulting, not only to me, but to all Fantastic Four fans and all of Marvel fans as well, or at least it should be, and all comic book superhero fans, period. Comic books were all the same in the golden and early silver age, right? And then, here along comes Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, and they create a dysfunctional family team of sort of superheroes, if you will. Um, he wrote the book like a family. He gave them flaws. The thing is, is very morose. Johnny is a fiery hothead. Sue has, struggles with insecurity, and Reed stretches himself so thin mentally that he's barely even there or pays attention and even notices the people around him, including his family and friends. Spider-Man followed with that, the lovable loser who can never catch a break. All of Marvel characters are flawed individuals. The comic book heroes before that really weren't. They were very godlike, just like DC Comics kind of is, okay? So, Marvel Comics is responsible for superheroes becoming flawed, more relatable characters. The whole Marvel way of doing things, if you will. It led to the revitalization of DC in the 70s with Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams' works on, work, on projects like uh, Batman, Detective Comics, and, of course, Green Arrow and Green Lantern. So, the importance of Fantastic Four cannot be stressed enough. So, whereas Fantastic Four may not always be completely the world's greatest comic magazine of the moment, it is the world's greatest comics magazine because of its influence on comic book culture and pop culture in general. In fact... It changed the industry. It paved the way for all that stuff we were talking about with DC. It paved the way for a new interpretation of superheroes, right? So, Kirby and Lee made Fantastic Four one of the most important titles of all time. They are so important to creators, to the history of comics, to comic fans, and even to the movies, you know? And Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man number three came out, and Parker has bought the Baxter building. And Johnny was upset about it at first, but he said, look, Fantastic Four will be back, and I'm saving it for him. So I'm really looking forward to that day. Uh, so it's not just about Deadpool, but it's just about that title was earned by the Fantastic Four because of its impact on the industry, and putting it on another title 
when we don't have a Fantastic Four book, slightly insulting. Plus the double standard thing, right? I don't know. Another Robbie Rant's coming up soon. Uh, we're doing another podcast very soon. Uh, lots of good stuff, so subscribe, like, share, pay attention. Thank you.